Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Prof and we're back again with another mage kill video. Okay, so I said I was gonna do the Sisters of Battle or whatever they're called, you know, those waifus with guns in 40k. I'm gonna do that video Saturday or Sunday because it's pretty long from uh, Baudemort or uh, I don't know what I'm, who I'm talking about. It's like 50 minutes. I'm gonna do that then. So now, today, we're gonna be checking out Blood Angels explained by an Australian. Supposedly, Supposedly, the Blood Angels are so cool, they even Mage Q did not make fun of them. Which is, wow, Jesus Christ, that's impressive. So G'day, guys and girl. Only Warhammer 40k could make every single character in their entire universe seem like the bad guy, yet make us still love them. We've got big, scary chocolate men with red eyes, space Mongolians, fairy Vikings, emos, and the topic of today's video, noble vampires who have dedicated all their resources towards squishing the space bugs of death. And all of these are the good guys. Don't even get me started on what the bad guys are like. See, the God Emperor of Mankind was a bit of a meme lord and decided to have a bit of fun when he was making the space marines. For the Blood Angels, he thought it would be pretty funny to make it so they had a strong urge to drink blood as well as the potential for them to become psychotic down the track. Now, it doesn't say if he 100% deliberately made them like this, but Come my on, former headcanon, I can't blame the guy for wanting to have a bit of fun here and there. In this video, we will cover who the Blood Angels are and where they come from, as well as what they did during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. We will also take a deep dive into the life and death of their glorious angelic Primarch, Sanguinius. This best is part boy. one of two, as the, the Blood Angels boy. lore is quite rich, and it would be too much of a condensed video if I tried to do their entire thing in just 20 minutes. Before we get into that, however, I have some exciting news. We are upping the stream count, baby. I recently got in contact with a rapidly growing streaming service called DLive, who are going to sponsor the channel. Hell yeah, take that demonetization. DLive is Oof. a streaming platform which rewards the viewers and streamers for engagement. Unlike YouTube, which takes 30% of Super Chat revenue, or Twitch, which takes 50% of subscription revenue. DLive takes absolutely no cuts, so everything you guys donate there goes to me. Oh, they make In money. return, I can also gift you yeah, guys money to donate to other streamers, such as Legend, or, you know, back to me. In saying that, though, I don't want to disrupt what we've already got going, so the Sunday six-hour YouTube streams aren't changing at all. I'm just going to add another two shorter streams per week, which will be Thursdays and Tuesdays if you're in Europe or America. 3 p.m. Washington time, 8 p.m. UK time, or 7 a.m. Australian time on D will likely result in me losing because of how silly they'll be, i.e. all factions have no upkeep or I just declare war on everyone. It's a win-win. Let's get into it. In the 30th millennium, the Emperor of Mankind got a little bit frisky and decided the galaxy was one big pair of cheeks that just needed to be clapped. Hence, he struck a deal with the local Asian, pervert, American and autistic dude to gain some power in order to create 20 demigod super soldiers. When it came to paying this merry band of shady characters, hey, I'm not saying that what he said there is accurate, but the was just like, think about oh, it. Sorry, we speak in no English, and then he blocked their Instagrams. Oof. This obviously pissed them off, hence, they yeeted his little demigod babies across the galaxy. Some of them landed on really shit planets and became assholes. Some of them landed on awesome planets and became cool dudes. Sanguinius, our glorious hawk boy, was different. His planet sucked mega balls. His planet Bal was actually three, Bal Prime and Bal Secondus, and they used to be paradises. However, they nuked the living shit out of each other, as people, you know, generally tend to do. Hence, all the planets in the Bal system now suck. That seems to be a common occurrence in the 40k universe. I mean, it happened in the Dead Gods. Fuck, I forgot which planet they were from, but it happened on that planet as well, right? It worked out Think well for them. Think of Mr. Fallout 4 and Mad Max. There were mutants everywhere and feral animals. Only a tiny population of humans remained who didn't completely suck. Sanguinius lands on Bal Secondus and is discovered by some somewhat okay humans who considered killing him for being a mutant, as he has wings growing from his back, but then like, wait, he's a glorious hawk boy. Exactly. Hence, they adopted him instead. Now, as far as origin stories go, Sanguinius is quite standard and actually kind of boring. He grows up fast, helps his people, kills bad guys on his planet, and becomes their leader. Then the big E rocks up and is like, yo, and Sanguinius is like, hey dad, let's go crusading together. Good game, easy. Probably that was kind of inaccurate. He was more like, hey daddy, how are you today? Okay, I'm not. One of the more seamless Primarch adoptions by their Big E. Something to note, as Sanguinius grew up, so did his wings. However, despite their size, 
It should have been technically impossible for them to lift him up and travel the kind of speeds he was traveling. This on top of the fact his bones were very dense, not the hollow kind required like birds have. Hence from the get-go Sanguinius was infused with warp spaghetti, something he kind of felt bad about. Sanguinius spent a lot of the Great Crusade by the Emperor's side, him and his blood angels acting at his honor guard. Cause if you're the Big E, the angelic Aryan dude by your side looks the coolest. Now the Blood Angels before they found Sanguinius were a bunch of violent degenerates, <laughs> sent in as a vanguard to basically massacre the enemy then feast violent on their flesh. Degenerates. While some legions gained their original Astartes from cool or noble people from Terra, the Blood Angels got theirs from mutants, scum, and bold cunts. To put it simply, they weren't called the Angels originally. As they were mostly the first ones into battle, especially against some unknown powerful enemies- Wait, they they're not called the Blood Angels, what are they called? The Bloods? Isn't that like an American gang and shit? That makes a lot more sense. So that's where they got their people from. Often suffered pretty severe casualties as they were Games constantly workshops, engaging in glorious Genesis. melee combat after literally drop potting right on top of the enemy's heads. Despite all the deaths, they could rebuild their forces really quickly as they just grabbed whatever hobos were strung along around the crusade <laughs> and shoved them full of gene seed. Despite this, they were surprisingly less sadistic than the Night Lords, so I guess it kind of worked out for them. Over the years, they were shunned more and more by the Imperium, as they were always splattered in excessive amounts of blood and gore due to their love of chainswords and vampirism. They were descending further and further into darkness, and were very close to being called forth to be exterminated darkness. as they slowly lost control. However, this all changed when they found their glorious Hawk Boy. After learning about the Imperium under That's his father, picture. Sanguinius recalled all of the Blood Angels to meet him. Instead of commanding their loyalty through birthright, something that the Blood Angels would not really have been super down with, he instead kneeled and pledged his loyalty to them. Nice work, Sanguinius. Despite this, there was a lot of work to be done. Sanguinius had to turn a pack of berserkers, whose ferocity was only rivaled by the World Eaters, into the Imperium's symbol of nobility and hope. He did this by joining Horus in various campaigns to bolster the Blood Angels' reputation as they fought alongside- That's probably why Horus went insane. Having to see Sanguinius amazing hero all the time while his bald ass head shining in the mirror probably did not help him out. That explains so much. Inside the much regarded wet lunar wolves. He also forbade anyone from eating flesh and drinking blood, which is pretty good call by him I would say. Sanguinius would continue to lead by example, his warriors becoming a disciplined force to be reckoned with, however also never losing their ferocity in combat. For a time, the Blood Angels would dumpster on any man enemy they came across, fisting their way across the galaxy and building up their legend. However, like all other legions, they were eventually tested in combat. Although, they probably should have been tested for a bunch of things with all that blood sucking they were doing, but that's for another video. They came across a star system controlled by a faction of humans that had maintained some pretty impressive armies and technology. This faction were cocky and immediately attacked Hello? any Imperial force sent to try and communicate with them. Hence the Blood Angels came in halt, hitting the first planet of the system hard and fast, full like mm -mm -mm, Jack Rabbit Hump style. The defenders employed the use of augmented warriors to try and hold back the Blood Angels, and despite not receiving many casualties, the Blood Angels were impressed with the bravery and the ferocity of their foe. After some fighting, Sanguinius called a ceasefire to honor the enemy's dead warriors and to hopefully allow the star system to surrender. Good guy Hawkboy. Also, naive Hawkboy as they replied by sending a literal Trojan horse towards the Blood Angel fleet, which turned out to be a bomb. This killed a bunch of Blood Angels Surprise. and ruined some of their ships, so in turn Sanguinius said, Hey guys, so yeah, you know how I've spent years teaching you to be men of nobility, mercy and discipline? Well I can all just fuck off, we've got some cunts to kill. <laughs> the Blood Angels then unleashed all of their weapons of war against these rogue humans, nuclear bombs, chemical warfare, gas attacks, Within only one day, the entire system had been completely raped, Oof. all the survivors being made into chapter servants or sent off to work in the depths of a forge world. Sanguinius Oof. himself kicked down the doors to the throne room and dragged the dumbass king outside to watch his entire kingdom burn. Do not fuck with the Blood Angels. Good boy. As the Great Crusade began to wind down, Sanguinius and by extension the Blood Angels had become everyone's favorite Primarch and Legion. Some of the other Primarchs got pretty jealous of our glorious Hawk Boy because honestly, like, who wouldn't? Just, just look at him. Just look at him. After a massive victory was won against the Orcs at Ulanor, Horus was raised to War Master despite most of the Primarchs, including Horus, believing it should have gone to Sanguinius instead. Horus is even quoted as saying, Sanguinius is way cooler than me, I don't know why I got it instead, Lamau. 
But you know, the Emperor is super wise clearly, as only a couple years later, Horace went full Italian spastic hunt bold mode and joined the forces of We are legit less than a hundred subs off of her taking turns, but because please support just on support. <laughs> rebellion. He saw that St. would God never have been their kill. father's cause to betray him, but maybe the Blood Angels would. Horus had become aware of the red thirst and darkness within the Blood Angels, as he once witnessed Sanguinius Mercy killing one of his own sons, oh. before Sanguinius explained it, that he got to sucky sucky for some fucky. He said, Oi bro, don't tell dad, and Horus was like, I got you bro. Horus realized that the Blood Angels could be corrupted and given to Korn if he was able to exploit their inner darkness. Hence, when Sanguinius was ignorant of Horus's betrayal, Horus was like, Yo Sangi, go to this star system and help the humans there. If you do it, I'll tell you how to cure your sons of their gene flaw. And Sanguinius was like, oh hell yeah man, I can see the future but for some reason can't see the trap you just laid down for me and the fact that you're already evil. Yeah. Hence, the Blood Angels traveled to a star system which had been gang banged by the forces of chaos and was now a living hell in real space. The Blood Angels were instantly attacked by warp entities and demons upon arrival, but they were like, easy bro, and fought against them. The war against Chaos was the hardest the Blood Angels had fought to date. Despite this, with a literal angel at their front, the Ninth Legion were winning. Until one of the greatest bloodthirsters of Korn, Kabanda, appeared and jeweled Sanguinius. Despite being impaled... Okay, that... Uh, uh, okay, I'm usually not much for Chaos cunts. By that, that, that dude looks fucking cool as hell. Jesus Christ, buddy. Kabanda broke Sanguinius' legs and smashed him to the ground. Oy. He then massacred 500 blood angels so quickly that the psychic backlash knocked out Sanguinius and inflicted the black rage upon every blood angel present. With an entire legion of overpowered berserkers, the blood angels smashed the demonic armies to smithereens, and Sanguinius was healed by his librarians. He later confronted Kabanda again during the war and tore off one of his wings and threw him back into the realms of chaos. As he did so, he said, When you return to hell, tell them that Sanguinius is the one that sent you. Ooh. Fucking badass. Ooh. Sanguinius' sons would Fucking go and their shit out of the sector and emerge victorious against the forces of chaos. However, our Hawkboy almost fell to chaos here. Heresy, I hear you say, but it is true. Just as Sanguinius was about to win and decapitate the Slaneshi- Sounds like some Horus propaganda I've ever, ever heard and shit. No fucking way. ...demon who was in command, it offered a solution to the Blood Angel's darkness. If Sanguinius willingly walked into a nasty-ass portal, his soul would be forfeited to the gods of chaos. However, his sons would be cured. Which is bullshit. I don't know why Sanguinius even considered this to be a valid option at all. It's likely he would have just been corrupted along with his legion. True. Sanguinius wasn't really known as the smart Primarch. Anyway, hey. before he could decide, one of his sons were like, Lamau, free drugs, and jumped into the corruption portal instead, <laughs> getting soul raped and hooked on meth instantly. Poor bloke. Sanguinius was like, bugger, he took my drugs. Free drugs. So he killed all the remaining demons and basically raised the entire star system to nothing. He received word from Rogel from Terra, who was like, yo, bro, all the white neo-Nazi bold cunts are attacking Terra. We need you to come back us up. Hawkboy was like, sure, but I'm in fucking whoop whoop, mate. Hence, the Blood Angels in their attempt to get to Terra got stuck in a massive warp storm, following a beacon till they eventually arrived in Ultramar to meet up with Gulliman and the Lion. They had no contact with Terra, hence did not know if it had fallen or not. Due to this, Gulliman formed Imperium Secondus oh, and yeah, declared Sanguinius as the Emperor, something Hawkboy wasn't really keen on. To make matters worse, Conrad, that little emo cunt, had gotten loose on McCrag and was being a pain in the ass, requiring the serious effort of Sanguinius, the Lion, and Gulliman before they finally captured him again. Fortunately, Fucking Conrad comrade. inadvertently revealed a paradox about his own foreseen death, which basically confirmed that Terra still stood. The three loyal Primarchs felt a bit stupid and awkward about, you know, Imperium Secondus, so they dismantled it and beelined for Terra. Chaos wasn't really in the mood for three massive loyalist forces to arrive and anal fuck their fleet. So they use warp spaghetti, shitloads of demons, and a blockade to try to stop them. But this is Sanguinius, the angel of blood we're talking about. He doesn't give a fuck about some blockade bullshit. True. Hence, the blood angels are able to punch through and reach Terra in time to take part in the siege, alongside the Imperial Fists and White Scars. The siege was pretty rough, as almost the full might of chaos was taking on only three loyalist legions. Angron demanded their surrender, and Sanguinius replied, Lick my balls, you aggro bitch. 
The final battle of Terra had begun as thousands of demigod warriors supported by millions more guardsmen and cultists began tearing each other a new asshole. Sanguinius was going Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Kaioken times 20, slaughtering everything in his path until Kabenda himself emerged and the two rivals fought. Again? Sanguinius was smashed from the sky and hit the ground hard, but this was a genuine Dragon Ball Z anime tier fight, so Sanguinius simply dusted himself off and took back to the air. He grabbed Kabanda and snapped his spine over his knee, killing the greater demon and throwing his corpse at the Chaos Legions. Sengu he beamed that motherfucker, he beamed Batman that motherfucker, Jesus. He then stood in front of the Eternity Gate, the final door before they reached the Emperor, and he became an impenetrable shield, curb stomping anything with spikes or tentacles before they could get in. Horus discovered that the Space Wolves, Dark Angels and Ultramarines were only hours away from arriving and would easily slaughter the forces of Chaos, so he lowered his void shields as a challenge to the Emperor. But Major Kill, why would the Emperor risk his life to confront Horus when the other loyalists were about to arrive and win anyway? Shut up, Timmy, you useless piece of trash! Horus had used the warp to completely cut off Terra's communications, so they had no clue that the reinforcements were about to arrive. The Emperor accepted Horus's challenge and- Okay, I'm still not that into the lore. Like, I, 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 we've seen a, lo a lot of lore videos, but the lore is so big. Like, doesn't the Emperor, you know, have the psychic powers and shit? Shouldn't he know shit? You know, him being, you know, Ooh, I can blow your brain from 20 kilometers away and shit. Okay, someone let me know, please. Shouldn't the Emperor be able to, you know, sense shit like that? Teleported himself, Sanguinius, Rogel, as well as a detachment of Custodians and Astartes. And Alanis Pius, for some reason. Oi. Horus once again used his warp spaghetti powers to make it so that the Emperor and his goon squad would all be teleported into different parts of his ship. Sanguinius, being awesome, cuts his way to Horus first. Now the Horus Heresy series has been... Your boy is true. Okay. Whatever. And ...written still. We know what happens. Released ...as I make this video, and it's about to cover what actually happened aboard Horus's ship. So we don't know 100% what will it contain, or if there'll be any twists or deviations from the original lore. But for be. now, we'll just stick with the OG lore. Horus tries again to get Sanguinius to join him. I don't really know why Horus keeps doing this, he must really love rejection. Hawkboy obviously says no, and the two Primarchs fight. Now Sanguinius had been fighting non-stop for days, and was wounded and exhausted, and Horus had been jerking off for a bit and was infused with the powers of chaos. So unfortunately, Sanguinius got absolutely wrecked and killed by Horus. F in the chat, boys. And F. girl. The psychic girl. backlash of their Primarch dying instantly induced the Black Rage in all the Blood Angels, who then single-handedly massacred the traitor forces on Terra and drove them off. Like, imagine you're a cow Space Marine engaging a bolt of firefight with the Blood Angels. <laughs> suddenly they stop firing and you begin to hear them scream instead. Everything goes silent, and then suddenly thousands of hyper-buff vampire berserkers emerge at the speed of sound and begin tearing through your comrades with their bare hands. Suddenly you notice your head has been removed from your shoulders and you didn't even see what got you. Black Rage OP. The biggie wasn't super stoked about Sanguinius dying, so he hit Horus with a fat Kamehameha and destroyed his mind, body and spirit. Horus' death banished all the demons on Terra and caused the already panicking traders, as they were being sucked off by the Blood Angels, to panic more, with the result being most of them dying and survivors getting the fuck out Good. of there. The Blood Angels eventually Good. chilled out, However, the death of their Primarch now meant that any Blood Angel at any time could fall to the Black Rage. The Black Rage basically being that the Blood Angel in question would hallucinate that they were Sanguinius, and everyone around them appeared as either traitors that needed to die, or their Blood Angel brothers. Obviously, this can be quite inconvenient for the Blood Angels, as they often lose their shit and kill their allies. But uh, Sanguinius' broken body was taken to Baal, and into a cute little tomb. To honor his sacrifice, the Imperium declared a holiday in his name, which is nice. The Blood Angels would continue to honor his memory by maintaining the noble spirit he'd instilled into all of them. But yeah, a lot of them kind of started drinking blood again. Eh, uh, shit happens, And that does us for today, guys. The Blood Angels and Sanguinius' origins and story through the Great Crusade and the Horus part? Heresy. Yes, there is. In part two of this video, we'll look more into what the Blood Angels did after the Age of Primarchs had ended as well as what their current lord, Dante, is up to. Dante? If you enjoyed this video, then can- Like, Biblical Dante? <laughs> anyway, um, damn, my boy Bursa, my 
poor boy Sangunias. Hope they revive this motherfucker at some point. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're probably gonna check out part two tomorrow. This was dope as fuck. I mean, it's major kill. He's dope as fuck usually. This was more, uh, more. This was a more grounded major kill. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, buddy. Have a nice fucking day.